Today on the Rumors Comedy Cast, Jordan Wellwood is back to talk to club favorite Daryl Lennox about his upcoming TV show, his appearances on Conan, his interview with Mark Marin, and all of the crazy advice he likes to give to bartenders about women. Follow us at Rumors Comedy. Welcome to Rumors Comedy Cast, episode 32. We're here with one of Rumors' favorite uh, comedians, Daryl Lennox, a friend of mine. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks Good for coming. Good to see in. you, man. Thanks. Yeah, cheers. This is uh, exciting for me, too. You're a Libra. Did it's you know true. that? <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> I did Mark Maron's podcast. He's a Libra. You're all your way, dude. So it's a good. It's that a one good, went well. It's, yeah, it's well. So this one, what does that mean? Is it like an even error? to be an addict. And I'm on my way. <laughs> suicidal and change your life around by interviewing people. <laughs> you interview the president. That's insane. Did you uh, listen to that? I did. What'd you I think? Did. As uh, I got me, I mean, I almost, I literally got a little teary eyed because he and I have the same, you know unquenchable ambition so i knew what it meant to him yeah you so and the I, president and, uh mark yeah no. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> i uh shot him a, a email and he said dude it was so hard for me not to cry i was thinking the same thing yeah so yeah it's cool man it's really emotional yeah that's awesome and uh you're obviously a favorite favorite here at rumors you've been here since 1997 you 1997, were saying 97 every year yeah and you always give us props you know during the show and yeah uh, uh, you count how many times you've been in town, or do you have a tally going, or no? No, I just know I haven't missed a year since '97. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have a routine when you're in town? Because you're here for two weeks, which is, mm-hmm. you know, a pretty long stretch. Like, you must be pretty comfortable now. But do you have a routine or something you like to do when you're in town? As far as on stage or just in town? Just when you're hanging out. I just, uh, well, you know, I had many years, and you end up having a lot of friends, and you end up catching up with staff from the 90s and staff <laughs> yeah. from the early aughts. And, uh, <laughs> so you catch up with everybody and see how everybody's doing and, and stuff, and everybody always checks on me to see if I need anything, and so I just usually hang out. Cool, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It's great for, and I got a lot of writing done. It's like one of my favorite places to just sit in that uh, apartment by myself and just crank just right so nice it's good, yeah do you have like a specific you know almost routine for writing like do you do free write like do you just sit and kind of or do you just peck away at stuff that, that's been on your mind so i get up you know and then i start my uh you know some people call them morning pages, but i think that's a little less masculine for me <laughs> so i have this word document and um I write my daily, you know, everything on that to all the people who was important to me that uh, passed on. Okay. So then I kind of keep them abreast of what's going on, and then I'll do my notes on the set in that time. So oh. I'll be like, you know, my step down, I'm like, man, that first show of Rumors, you know, I was a little stuffy in the head, and I couldn't hear, so I mumbled some words, but there's a couple ideas that I liked, and so then I'll jot those down, and yeah. then once I finish that, I'll go to another document and I'll take those notes I wrote there and start working on those bits. Oh, wow. It's almost like you're getting two things done. Like at one point, you're kind of yeah. talking to family members on the other side, you're getting yeah, yeah. work done. That's yes. Cool. Both, they're combined to me. There's no difference, really. <laughs> That's yeah. a wicked, man. Yeah. Um, and you were just coming from Florida. How was that? Florida was hard, man. And, <laughs> I've heard that a lot, like just in listening to podcasts and stuff. Like people yeah. have a real issue with Florida in the States. It's a weird place and it's hard because I, you know, I, I have a, a very a, a strong familiarity with them. I've been yeah. going there since 2001. And so, again, some places are so familiar and so comfortable with you that, you know, the locals and your friends they end up dominating the first few nights of the week. So <laughs> yeah. it's not like a real show. You <laughs> okay, know? Yeah. It's like taming the lions. And <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants you to do nine shots with them before you go on stage. <laughs> and then tell the story about the time you almost got put in jail. And so it just turns into this weird thing. And so it's draining, but it's where I like to go and work on stuff before I start working for real. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like fun problems, though. Like yeah. you wanting to party too much. And Yeah, yeah. You know, it's good. Yeah. Anytime I need to work on something important, I go there first uh, to work it out, and then I'm ready to go. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And uh, one thing you have been working on recently, we were talking a little bit before uh, we got up here, was uh, was your TV show. You, you're you starting to get stuff in place for the pilot. Why don't you tell us about uh, the show and, and what people can, can hopefully well, expect? Well, it's called Linux 2020, and uh, it's about my life story, a la Louis and Curb Enthusiasm. Reality-based, but not, you know, it's just based on my life. I play... Me, Daryl Lennox, and uh, um, going through my life past and present and future yeah. uh, with my limited vision, then it's going to get better from the surgery, and then I'm going to be a new man, then it's going to deteriorate, uh, and at the same time, I'm chasing 
you know, this girl who I'm going to get eventually, she'll be my wife <laughs> along that process. It's going to be, alert, yeah. yeah, it's going to be mayhem because she's this beautiful bottle service waitress <laughs> uh, with that whole slash almost escort feel to it. And, <laughs> yeah. and then my best friend is there. And so it's surreal. So a good, good storyline. A lot of room for conflict. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, definitely. Perfect. So it's, I'm excited where it, I wrote a couple episodes and then. I signed with uh, Brent Butts Production Company because my thought process, I had a few of them that are interested in the podcast, but I thought with Brent, uh, it would literally be like getting to work with Seinfeld in the sense that he did what I wanted to do. Yeah. Like he did stand up, <laughs> yeah. then he did Corner Gas and turned to the greatest show in Canadian history, and so then it's syndicated, boom. So I thought, yeah. who would I rather have holding my hand through this process, that guy or just some weird dude in Toronto. <laughs> yeah, someone yeah. who's actually been through the process. Yeah, understands somebody that up. knows every aspect of it. Definitely. And I know he wants to come across the border mm -hmm. uh, to get some of his stuff more profile. Then I have my profile stage is pretty high right now. Yeah. So I think it's a good union. It's a good partnership. That's yeah, awesome. And in all accounts, he's like a super nice guy. And He is yeah. a very super nice guy. And it's funny. He's so funny. So... He got a hold of my script and everything. He has to, you know, he knows how to format things and stuff. He said it was very hard and interesting trying to write in your voice. <laughs> yeah. He was just trying to write like American black yeah. guy. He goes, He's like, uh, yeah. there's no room for writer jokes. Uh, no. in, yeah. So he goes, uh, so please excuse all the jive turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's awesome. I think one question I had uh, just before last time when you were here and probably everyone at the club has is because you've been here so much. Like if the, you know when the show progresses, is rumors going to make it in? Do you think at some point? Or oh, there's location stuff. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, oh, absolutely. Cool. The stories I have here, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> John's like super stoked. Our producer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He wants yeah. to make it in. There's this one guy that drives me around the McDonald's, and we talk <laughs> in the van. And, oh. All about his woman problems. So for some reason, <laughs> for some reason, I'm always the 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 bag of vans to bartenders, and lady yeah. issues. You even had like you know you have I've heard you say a bit like that before, but then like just witnessing just at the back of the room, like people come up and they want to say great show, and then like three people literally in the last half an hour just kind of spilled their guts to you. Yeah, that why does that happen so much to you? Do you think? I you know uh, I think it's because I talk so openly about. What I'm feeling and going through, yeah, and I can't. I think it brings them a level of comfortable, comfort and intimacy with me. They feel like I can tell this guy anything. That's awesome. Yeah. Is that like a double edged sword? Like, is sometimes you just want to relax and people are telling you about their divorces? And nah, stuff? man. Nah, this is so corny. Uh, but this really is like in a club. Yeah, really is like a sanctuary. You know, I'm not a big church guy, but I love to be in the club. When there's no people in it, yeah, it's like it's like the most calmest thing. And actually, when I meditate, you know, that's my little meditation safe place is in a comedy club. Nice. And I do all my creating in that space of being a club. So I just love being a club. The know? energy's still yeah. here when it's yeah. yeah. So even after the show, I can tell if they want to talk. Then I mean, I kind of turn them into my collective consciousness, and so now we're talking on the same wavelength. Yeah, that's unreal. No, I've seen it in action, and it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, and also, um, you know, just between our relationship and, like, the times that I've worked with you, you've always had a lot of great advice and encouraging stuff. But was there somebody in your life that you had, like, comic-wise, that kind of helped you out in that same regard? Not on that same level. Like, yeah. uh, I, but I've had, I've been, like, some of the great ones have always given me little pieces of advice. My yeah. first comedy mentor was from Seattle. His name Rod Long. Uh -huh. And he was, like, so great. Taught me how to do so much stuff. And then after that, I worked with Chris Rock, and he really jammed me up with, uh, you know, stop trying to kill and work on your act. Yeah. Uh, and then Chappelle was like, dude, you have a point of view, man. As long as you have a point of view, you'll always work. Yeah. Uh, Damon Wayans. It was so though I've got a chance to get little bits and nuggets from all those people. From the greats, yeah. And then I kind of shape and mold my own philosophy like that, mm -hmm. kind of like uh, Scientology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm my own Scientologist. <laughs> I was just making shit up. Is that why I had to pay all those fees for yeah. advice? Is yeah. that? <laughs> it's like, oh no. Yeah. I'm in a Daryl Lennox cult of <laughs> comedyology. <laughs> so what's next uh what's next on board? 
Yeah. After um, Winnipeg. After Winnipeg, uh, head to Minneapolis. Yep. And then after Minneapolis, uh, Victoria, Vancouver, uh, and then uh, head to L.A. Um, cool. Hopefully get that Conan date right around that time so I don't have to come back east and then fly back west. Um, so it's good. Yeah. It's, it's a good place, man. Yeah. To be. Once you get that first stuff out of the way, they just kind of give you – Give it to you the a little first going in, they liked you. Yeah. Yeah, just more stuff. You know, I had a yeah. good year with all the, the special and the, the album and all the mm -hmm. stuff that went well. And then they, it's like they trust you after that. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So, what was your like initial like interaction with Conan in that? Because that's where you would be like, obviously, you, everyone's a big fan of Conan, but when you're meeting him, was he, was it, what was that like? Uh, I didn't meet him until after the set. Okay. But he, uh, he caught me off guard with how uh, uh, praiseworthy. I mean, he just, yeah. I mean, he lit me up with, like, how smart and intelligent and the writing and stuff. And he was really uh -oh. genuine. Yeah. Um, and talking about, he asked where I was from, and I said, you know, uh, I was born in Vegas, lived in Seattle, but I got my game in Vancouver. And he was like, oh, man, that is great smart audiences i could see it in your writing nice. and i felt good man i felt like yeah man the boys felt like those american soldiers that turned into boxers and this is tucson arizona we did it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah i felt good man that's crazy yeah. and uh so like things are going super well right now and you're killing it but uh we always kind of do a one question uh, every podcast which is worst gig like a lot of people love hearing those stories for some reason just hell gigs and uh seeing as how you've you know done so much on both sides of the border what's your worst canadian gig and what's was the worst american gig the worst canadian gig is the one i talk about on stage with the uh <laughs> yeah. the eight eskimos and the wolf in uh carmack uh in uh white past white horse that was like that was absurd. That's abs yeah, embarrassing and just frustrating. That was the worst. Yeah, American. Um, uh, I did a military gig in Tacoma, and it was like a Nubian. It was like Def Jam night. And okay. So I tore it up the first night, and then I came back another time. So then I thought I was going to be, you know, a star. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, if you hadn't heard the story, but I was already lying to everybody, telling everybody I was going to be an Arsenio and all that sort of <laughs> stuff. So I had uh, got this credit card from this girl. She was dumb enough to pull, let me put a credit card <laughs> in my name. So I'm just ringing her card. So I come in with all these, I'm about to be on Arsenio clothes <laughs> yeah. to do this. What uh, kind of clothes is it? Like it's the 90s? Like, oh Yeah, all the 12 different, everything you saw on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> okay. All of yeah. that. You know, it's 20 different jacket. colors and huge pants and a high top and the slashes on the side. Nice. So I came in, you know, with my, my leather coat on, all this stuff. And they was like, there he is. <laughs> so I was just, I was just, oh, it was. And so it was in the middle of a dance floor. And I just come out, and uh, they're just not biting. Yeah. And so somebody go, boo, get this nigga off stage. <laughs> and so I said, what? Get this. You ain't even funny, motherfucker. So then this girl in the front row goes, just talk about their mama. That's all they understand. So I look at her, and her eye was crooked. Mine was crooked at the same time. <laughs> I go, well, I'm going to listen to a cross-eyed bitch like you for. <laughs> and so then that was like, oh, she was like one of the commanding officers' wife. And he was like, don't be talking about my bitch. So. It dude, it turned into just a clusterfuck. So I couldn't, I couldn't do nothing, and so, and I wouldn't take the money. Oh, did you I get, don't. I said, I'm not taking this money. I'm not taking this money. But yeah, did you regret one. not taking the money? No, <laughs> no, yeah. no. I've, I've got a, a, a enormous sense of pride that if I think that bad, I will not take yeah. that money. Yeah. yeah, I've heard stories of other comics like people being like, "You are not funny. You don't," deserve, and they're peeling a check out of a hand. Yeah, and I'm like, "How could you do that?" Like. Oh. It's the, <laughs> just the dignity part of yeah. it would be rough. That's crazy. So hopefully we'll get to make some new memories this time around. It's going to be a good two weeks. Yeah. And you will only be here for how many of the – you only one week? Tonight, and then I'll be back next week. Uh, okay. I got all next week. I could – I could okay. not the whole week, but all right. one or two nights. Do you think you're the best guy in the city? <laughs> what do you think? What do I think? I'm the best guy. I'm the best person just Oh, in general. best comic. Are you, so you're getting good. I can see that. Thank you. you. You're getting good. I can see that. Yeah. So I'm proud to see the work now. Thank you. Good. Thank you for your help. Terrell <laughs> Lennox.
He's asking the tough questions here. Rumors Comedy Cast. You can check him out uh, at Daryl Lennox on Twitter. That's right. Uh, website. DarylLennox.com. DarylLennox.com. You can check me out on Twitter as well. Jordan Wellwood, 1L. Thanks for tuning in to Rumors Comedy Cast. Come see Daryl all week long. Check it out. Say hi for the show. He's got shirts for sale. That's right. And Conan's going to be dope. One, two, three.